If you've ever been an urban explorer, you probably have at least one experience that scared you senseless. For me, it was a few weeks ago. I've tried not to think about it. Tried to pretend it happened differently. Well, that and the fear of something else happening after the fact kept me on edge for a couple weeks. Now, I think I'm out of the woods, no joke intended. You see, I'm not so much an urban explorer as I am a rural explorer. I live in the deep south, far away from any large cities with old buildings. However, there are ghost towns and ruins and woods all over worth checking out if you're ever down here. On this particular day, I was driving home from a relative's house and my GPS had turned me around. I wound up on a one-lane dirt road looking for an opportunity to make a U-turn. It was after a few minutes that I came across what looked like a dirt driveway. It was surrounded by trees on both sides and a chain ran across the entrance with a bright red no trespassing sign. I couldn't see too far in, but it looked unused for some time. I lit it up. I got out and dropped the chain. From there, I drove onto the path and rehung the sign to help avoid being caught. The path was overgrown with grass and vines, lined with thick forest on either side. The ground was dusty, and the skinny brown trees provided a claustrophobic feeling. Bushes and stalks of tall grass scraped my car. However, at the end of the trail was a clearing. It was a large circular field of overgrown grass in the middle of the distant woodland. In the center of the clearing was what appeared to be a large, desolate house. The house was two stories tall and clearly huge from the area it was built in. The windows and doors were all boarded up on the first floor. The whole thing had a nasty gray-brown stain from the years of elemental exposure. But you could see that it was beautiful in its prime. I imagine the place has been abandoned for some time. There was no sign of electricity being run from the main roads, there was no sign of modern appliances being outwardly installed, and there was a rusty pump out front. By the architecture, it looked like a brothel one would see in an old Main Street town. But there was no other signs of any other buildings for miles. I approached the creaky and rotted front porch looking for a way in. I found one of the boards loose on the front downstairs window. I peered inside for a long time before deciding to enter. The smell of rot and musty wood blasted my nostrils. I had smelled it enough times to just ignore it. I was more concerned of chemical smells or cigarettes, indicating someone was there. But there was none of this. The entire bottom floor was bare. There was no furniture, no kitchen, not even walls apart from the necessary pillars. The entire main floor was just bare wood with dust and what looked like mud and other gunk in various states of decay. There was a main staircase leading to a second floor. It had several rooms and hallways going in both directions out of sight of the main floor. From the looks of it, this place may have been an inn. I pulled the board back as quietly as possible, since I always want to be subtle. You never know if a cop is in earshot, even in the most abandoned of places. I crept through the window and dropped in. Dust was immediately kicked up, and I got a better view of the debris all over the floor. Wood and rocks and housing materials all shattered and scattered about. I looked around for my now better vantage point. There was some light trickling in from the holes in the roof and the non-boarded upstairs windows. They faced the front of the house and were a rich, maroon stained glass. They cast a deep red tint in contrast to the beams of yellow. I then realized something about the house I must have not initially noticed. The bottom half of the staircase was gone. It looked like it had been smashed away. The gap to the floor was probably the height of an average man. 
I could jump up there, but I wanted to see the downstairs first and make sure I was clear. I watched my steps carefully as I made my way to an alcove room, which was probably a sitting area. It was there I saw something else I had missed. At the back of an alcove was a doorway leading downstairs. It must have been a basement or cellar of some sort. It was pitch black from the frame onward. I reached for my phone and cursed under my breath. It was still on the charger in my car. I guess because there was no service and I stumbled on this place during the daytime that I didn't even think to grab it. I turned to go to the opposite direction towards the empty kitchen room. I was almost there when I heard an unmistakable noise. Footsteps. They sounded like a pair of heels or dress shoes coming in rapid succession, growing louder as they reached the doorway. It was out of my line of sight as the alcove curved out its own corner. There was no way to see it, until it emerged. At first, my brain wouldn't comprehend it. A dog? A bear? No. What am I seeing? Oh, God, I muttered. From the corner emerged a massive hairy monstrosity. It was the tusks that gave it away at first. This was a boar. A huge, black, rancid, smelling boar. By the looks of it, he must have easily doubled me in size. His tusks were long and bits of his matted, wiry hair gave way to deep scars. It turned to face me. Now, if you've never encountered a boar in the wild, they can vary in size. However, they are all dangerous. They have sharp teeth, a violent charge, and will most likely consume you if they're hungry enough. These things are demons of the forest, and I had never seen one apart from in tree stands or mounted as trophies. This one towered above all of those. I sucked in air, waiting for a reaction. It bent, snorted hard, and planted its feet. In a split second I knew my only safe bet was a clean jump to the staircase. I bolted to the right as the beast charged. Its tusk nearly pierced my leg as I jolted away. I took one running leap and my arms connected enough to pull myself up. I rolled up a few extra steps and heard its hooves slamming the wood below me. It was shrieking and snorting and kicking up dirt and debris in a fit of rage. That's when I started laughing. It wasn't a good natured laugh, but a panic attack manifested in the form of mania. It stopped after a short spell. I then took a deep breath and continued up the staircase. At this point, I was going to have to wait until the commotion downstairs ceased to find an exit. The banister at the top of the staircase extended to a wall in both directions. From there, it was a hallway with rooms on both sides. I made my way to the right. I noticed some rooms had doors and others didn't. I chose the first door to my right. It had a door that was cracked about the width of my body. Inside was old, rotting furniture. Dressers, bed frames, doors, and cabinets that were all stacked haphazardly in a pile. Behind it all was a small gap in an unboarded window facing the roof, its bottom half missing. I was standing in the doorway when I heard a noise that made my blood run cold. A creak. A long, drawn out, ominous creak. The mild scare was then punctuated with nauseous fear by the sound of a muffled cough. It was coming from the end of the opposite hallway. I quickly and quietly made my way into the room and hid behind a pile of wood and garbage. Thankfully, the board was still slamming around downstairs, so my mistakes were masked. I had a small hole in the pile to see the doorway and slightly into the hall. My heart was pounding so hard, I thought it was audible. My lungs were on fire and I could feel my eyes moisten. 
The birds outside the window had gone completely silent. I then heard a now familiar sound. I heard hooves. I heard the exact same clopping I had heard just minutes ago. Another one? I thought in a terrified moment. The clops grew closer. I strained my eye to see into the hallway, hoping the noise would stop or go to the opposite direction. It heard me laugh. It definitely knows I'm up here. It was in that moment of brutal tension that I saw it. The unmistakable snout led by two long tusks. It kept moving, revealing fur and a snarling mouth. However, it then made my mind readjust again. It didn't have eyes, rather just shrunken dried holes with nothing behind it. Its skull curved in a way that boars don't usually curve. At the back of its head looked to be a leather strap, then a different color of hair, then flesh. Then I saw the hooves, bloody and crudely detached above the base. The empty fur pulled up around a man's wrist like a rotten leather glove. He was naked apart from the severed boar's head and hooves. He walked on his hands and feet. He made no noise other than the few huffs. Dried blood caked the areas of his pale flesh where the bloody parts were worn. He was emaciated, but still large enough to easily be a threat. I don't know how to explain it. It was so weird, so vile, that I still can't wrap my head around it. He moved his head into the room, but after seconds that felt like hours, he turned. His body in a contorted curve as he balanced his feet and his hands on the severed hooves. He clumsily clicked his way down the hall and out of sight. In this moment, I had two options. I could risk the stairs and bore, or take the window to the roof and risk the masked psychopath being on my heels. I had made my mind up. It was then I heard a shriek so inhuman I've had nightmares about it. It was sharp and high, but muffled and resounding. It sounded wet, but also wheezed. It was followed by rapid clopping on the wood. It was coming for me. I scrambled clumsily out the small opening in the bottom of the window and rolled out onto the roof. The drop was a risk, but the only way to get out fast. I heard the stomping enter the room, and I let myself down as safe as I could. By some miracle, I rolled onto the ground with nothing worse than having the wind knocked out of me. Without turning back, I scrambled to my feet and bolted for my car. As I opened the door, I heard the shriek again. I heard the monster downstairs slamming into the front door. I heard the creatures upstairs slamming into the window and screaming its putrid lungs out. Without looking back, I slammed my car into ignition and sped off. I skidded through the grass toward the path. I ripped down the post holding the chain as my car burst back onto the dirt road. I raced back the way I came and found my way home in a shaking panic that lasted for hours. I spent that night wide awake. That was the end of it. Although I don't get it. I don't get why a person would live in such squalid conditions to live out a fantasy that makes sense only in their mind. I don't know. What I do know is if you do this stuff in the country, just be prepared. You may not meet a gang member or a drug dealer or a junkie, but you may meet something far more dangerous. You may meet something that defies all reason you may meet something that would eat you alive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that terrifying story by Reddit user Sam Marduk. I'll be sure to leave a link to his page down in the description below. 
If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button, click subscribe, and hit the little bell so you can be notified when my videos pop up. And, as always, my darkness militia, have a terrifying evening.